always a pleasure. Thank you for the time today. You know, you're still dual to me with or without the title, but things didn't go your way in that cyborg fight. So what I'm wondering is, has the pandemic actually been helpful? Most fighters would say not being able to fight for a long time has been a bad thing, but maybe it's given you more time to regroup and refocus after that loss. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's definitely, you know, it's been interesting times, but um, yeah, it hasn't slowed me down in my training. And uh, it's just been, yeah, what the world is kind of, it's, it's been interesting, but um, my, my training partner is Lance Gibson Jr. My coach is my husband. So we have a small bubble that we're already together all the time anyway. So it, it wasn't that difficult to navigate it. Very true. And Jesse was on the line with us earlier and she said that she's from Team Underdog. So it kind of fits for her to always be the underdog in every fight. But do you see yourself being the spoiler to her being a spoiler? Um, no, I just see myself being victorious on Friday night. Um, I'm, I'm excited to go on the, out there and put on a show. Uh, and you know what? I never underestimate anyone. So um, I'm ready for this fight and uh, I'm excited to be back uh, doing what I love. Absolutely. And we're excited to see it. My last question for you is, you already mentioned being in that small bubble with your husband as your training partner, but have you brought in anybody else for this camp to help you work with uh, the style that Jesse presents? Yeah, definitely. We've got a small group of guys that we've been, that I've been kind of rolling with and, and sparring with that, um, you know, my regular training partners, but they're great on the ground and they've got, um, we've just been practicing, you know, getting ready for this style specifically. Uh, but um, yeah, no, we've, we've kept it small, but definitely I've had my regular crew in there with me. Important was family to bouncing back from that cyborg loss, you know, mentally, emotionally. I mean, it's, it's a, the people around me were picking me up. My community picked me up. It was, it was that night when I came out of the arena, there was like 60, 70 people uh, in a big circle, you know, give me, giving me hugs. And it was, it was, you know, it, it right away made it feel I don't know. It was, it was special. Even though I lost, it was still felt great to have the people that love me around me. And um, I think that's important for athletes to have people around them that believe in them and, uh, you know, just have their back regardless of winner losses. Was there any hesitancy on your part going to the U.S. to fight right now, given how worse the States has been hit compared to Canada by the coronavirus? Um, no, I knew Bellator was doing an amazing job. You know, I, we got sent packets of kind of what the protocols were going to be. And it just felt like, and even since I've been here, it's just so professional and I feel safe here. So um, they're doing a really amazing job. And, and yeah, I'm, I'm confident I'd come back and fight here during this time over and over again, if, it, if we have to. And last one for me, um, I mean, as a former champ, obviously the goal is to get back to the title, potentially get back to Cyborg if she still uh, holds it. How, how far as a former champion do you think you'll have to go for that? Like one fight, two fight? What do you think uh, the possibilities are? I don't make those calls. I got to go out there on Friday and, and make a statement of, of, uh, yeah, of who I am and, and why I belong right back in there. All right, best of luck Friday. All right, our next question comes to the line of Giancarlo Alino. Giancarlo, your line is now live. Hi, Julia. Uh, as mentioned there, this is going to be your first fight since the loss to Cyborg. Uh, before that, you hadn't lost a fight in nine years. So what did you learn from that? Like, what were some of the takeaways from that loss that you feel helped you as a professional? Uh, just looking at, you know, uh, technic technical errors that I made during that fight that kind of got that outcome. So it was good for us to go back, see kind of where I made some, some errors and, and what I can do um, better. And, uh, and overall, just, just uh, finding that hunger again, right after that loss, I, you know, it took me a couple weeks to kind of break it down with my coaches and my team. And, and then right that, right after we were, it was the beginning of February, we were like, you know what, we got to get back in there. And then you know, the pandemic hit. So it's been uh, an interesting last couple of months, but I'm, I'm ready. And a uh, final question for me. Uh, we've seen all these other divisions like heavyweight, welterweight, featherweight have their own Grand Prix. With the landscape of the women's division right now and women's MMA, do you think Bellator should set up a women's Grand Prix? Yeah, it would be amazing. It'd be super exciting. Um, it's definitely a good idea. And uh, yeah, but, and I'd love to be a part of it. All right, our next question will come from the line of John Eric Pulley. John, your line is now live. Hi, Julia. How are you? Good. How are you? 
Good. Thanks for asking. So I wanted to ask you um, something that you touched on a little bit here. You've been saying, obviously, you know, your husband's one of your coaches. So I was wondering, how has he helped you out, not only as a fighter, but just with life in general? Oh, well, he's a, you know, he fought and he fought back in the day. He's a, he's a warrior. So he's been there on throughout my entire career, kickboxing and MMA. And uh, yeah, he's just, it's, it's, I mean, we're, we're partners in life, but also in the cage and business and everything. So um, definitely he's helped me out in every area. And then we don't see a lot of people in general fighting into their late thirties and especially not at the level that you are. What's the secret to longevity in the sport? I just, just staying ready. You know, I think that it's not taking big breaks off in between fights, um, healthy nutrition, uh, diet, um, staying mentally, physically, you know, emotionally strong throughout, um, yeah, throughout life. It's just, uh, I, I remember earlier on my career, I took longer breaks off and, and would go up and wait and kind of not be as healthy in between camps. And, and as I got an older, I realized, you know what, I got to take care of injuries. I got to make sure that I, you know, cover, cover every, every base. So that's one of the tricks. <laughs> Our next question will come from the line of Arkady Sakovsky. Arkady, your line is now live. Hi, Julia. Great to speak to you again. It's been a while uh, from Ego Total Channel in Israel. How are you? Hello. I, want, I wanted to ask you, um, how eager are you to get the rematch against Chris Cyborg? Uh, hypothetically speaking, maybe she's, uh, she will lose the belt. Excuse me for cutting you. Maybe she will lose the belt and there will be a chance to fight for the belt or fight against Cyborg, a rematch. What will be your pick? That's the follow-up. I'm excited. I mean, the thing is, though, is that I'm focused on my fight Friday night. So I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go out there and do what I make a statement on Friday night um, before I even look at that. So right now, I'm not really focused on that. But of course, um, being champion is my ultimate goal. So being champion again. So um, yeah. But Friday night's what's important, and and that opponent's what's important right now. So that's who I'm focused on. Thank you, Julia, and I uh, wish you good luck on Friday. Thank you. All right, our next question is going to come from the line of Kevin Shejan. Kevin, your line is now live. Hey, Julia. Uh, looking back through your career, you know, you've only had three losses, and, you know, those three losses have been to Ronda Rousey, Amanda Nunes, and recently Chris Cyborg. When you look at those three women, those three women are, have been known to be one of the greatest fighters in the women's division. Ronda Rousey being a trailblazer, Amanda Nunes being considered right now one of the goats. Uh, you know, looking back at that, like you know, knowing that you know you only lost to the best of the best, does that give you motivation? Hey, if I can only lose to the best of the best, that's how close I am to the top. Mm, I don't want to lose to the best of the best. You know, I, 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 that is something, none of those losses are something that sit well with me because um, losing sucks and I don't want to lose. So when it, it, they drive me, those failures drive me to be a better mixed martial artist and to, to become better. But um, none of those, I, I'm not happy with any of those losses on my record. So um, they motivate me and uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, with the motivation going on, uh, you know, like we saw uh, one of the previous journalists said before me, you know, you, you, no one sees uh, fighters fighting into their late 30s. How many fights do you think you got, uh, you know, in your system before you got it? You say, you know what, it's time for me to ride off into the sunset. Uh, you know, I, I can't really decide that right now. I feel fantastic. Um, and, but, you know, I think that it'll be something that I have a conversation with, uh, you know, my, my husband and my family and when we decide to hang up the gloves. But as of right now, I'm hungry and I want to be champion again. So that's what I'm looking forward to doing on Friday night. All right. Our last question will come from the line of Alex Behunin. Alex, your line is now live. Hi, Julia. Um, were you disappointed that you didn't get an automatic rematch after your long winning streak and defending the belt four times? Uh, I wouldn't say disappointed. I, I think that um, I, I would just say that I, I want to go out there and, and make a point and make a statement on Friday night to show why I deserve that rematch or why I deserve the next title shot. But 
as of right now, I can't look past it. And I'm focused on this fight. I'm just excited to get back in there. You know, the world has been turned upside down with the pandemic and with everything like that. So um, to be back in fighting is like a dream come true. And it kind of feels, it feels, um, I'm just excited. I don't know how else to explain it, but I'm going to go out there and make a statement on Friday and, and let everyone know that I'm still at the very top. Uh, and then one last for me, uh, how do you see yourself winning? I'm going to be working for a finish first round, second round, third round, whatever it takes, but I'm coming out with my hands raised. All right, Julia, thank you very much for the time. Next up we have Ryan Bader momentarily. Thank you.